guys. So today I'm going to go over nested models. Basically, this is what allows you to uh, control what gets shown, your different views, even in a single view, like which component is focused and receiving the messages, aka keystrokes or any other I.O. So I'm going to explain that to you and show you a little bit of a demo of one of the projects that I work on a lot. Let me show you what my project looks like. I'm using a list component or a list bubble from our bubbles repo. And basically here, these are all different projects that you might want to have entries for. So this is like a project management tool. It's basically almost like a little notebook for keeping track of the state of your project. As you can see, I added a few different little commands at the bottom here. So you've got create, rename, delete. So for example, this hi hi, maybe let's rename that to hello charm. And then you'll see that it renames that and it writes that to the database. So we can also go ahead and delete some of these. So I'm all of this is handled in its own sub model or nested model. But then if you hit enter, it opens up a new view and this one is a little hard coded and a little scuffed. So don't worry about it too much. This is basically where you can start to manipulate entries. So this is a different view and a different model than what was being shown previously. And if I hit escape, I can actually go back to the previous view. So this is something that a lot of people want to be able to do is basically jump around from different between different views and different models and then have different behavior mapped to maybe some similar keys. So I'll go ahead and quit out of that. And I'll actually go ahead and dive into some of the code now. So let's open up the Chewy.go. This is where I hold my main model. And as you can see here, line 21, I've got an enum that I have defined for what I call session state. And this state is, a, as you can see, a field in the main model. This is like a very, very common pattern that we see that we encourage in Bubble Tea programs that basically you hold a state field. And this is how you're deciding one, what's, get, what's getting shown. So your view, what you're showing is going to be decided based on the current state that's defined in the main model. And then another thing that you'll notice is that the update, which is basically like where you're passing messages to or like how messages are getting processed is also going to be completely oriented around state. Like at least it is for my project because I broke down all of my functionality for the project view. All of that functionality exists in the project model. So for this one in the main model, all I'm focused on is managing state. So for these two cases where basically I'm getting a back message from entry UI, that's when I hit escape and I want to go back to the project view because I'm manipulating the state of the main model. I want to do that in the main model update. So I've got that for both of these. The select message is when I hit enter and I want to change it so that I can see all the entries for a given project. That's what this switch case is doing. And then there's another one that's basically trying to decide where I'm sending these messages to. Bubble Tea has a top down approach. So basically the main model is what receives the message first and then it, it delegates that to the correct model that should be handling those messages. So in this case, if we're in project view, meaning that we are seeing and we want to interact with all the projects, I'm actually getting it so that it's calling update on the project model and then it's passing the message down to the project models update. And then from there, it has its own way that it's gonna handle that message and that you're gonna be able to interact with the project list that is completely separate from this entry view. The entries get changed depending on which project got selected. We're actually initializing a new, a new entry a model every single time that we are entering the entry view so that it can be based on whatever the active project is, AKA, whatever we selected from the list. Let's check out the project view. So then in this one, as you can see, we're not worried about state. We're not worried about any of that. We've just got all of the information that we need for working with the projects. Here, we'll just skip past this new stuff. That's just default initialization things. And then here in the update, you can see this one's like pretty chonky. This one's a chonker, okay? We've got a lot of functionality that we are mapping to different commands. The nice thing with commands and like basically why you would want to do certain things in a command is if you're having to wait on anything, basically if it needs to be asynchronous so that you don't want any kind of delay in your UI feedback while you're waiting for this thing to happen. 
you just put it into a command and then once that command is finished it will return what's called a message so t dot message and then that's what we're handling in this overarching switch case one thing you that you did see when i renamed the project you saw that there was actually a text input that popped up and that i was allowed to type in and then when i hit enter it closed it and we were back to focusing on the list so what happened there is where you see this if m dot input dot focused this is checking if we're focused if we're trying to focus on the text input or if we're focused on the list if we didn't have that distinction then if i were to hit enter there would obviously be two definitions for what enter should do and then if i were to hit like type c while i was in the middle of typing into this input field then it might even like try and create a new project while i'm typing and then it would just be a whole mess so this is one way that we are we have two components or two nested models in a single view or then a single model that basically are getting handled uh, separately. And that's so that's basically what this uh, if statement is doing is it's basically handling all of the uh, key binds and things like that, the behavior that we want mapped for when we have the text input focused. And then we've got down here, we've got basically a switch for all of our other when the text input field is not focused and we are working with the list, then these are the key binds and this is the functionality that we want mapped out. And then here the view is also different. So this one is, uh, again, if the if the text input is focused, then we want to be able to see it. So we've got, we keep the list and then we also add the, the view from that bubbles. And then otherwise we're just not going to show it. So yeah, that's pretty much the lay of the land, but I figured this might be a great way to kind of understand how things kind of like flow through the process with the Bubble Tea program. So I really hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or there's anything that I didn't cover, please let us know and have a good one. Peace out.